And really, what I want to know is, as I asked you when I first came here, is should I be in pain? You know, is it, I was been riding for three, four years, and I just believe that after 20 kilometers, I should be hurting. My bum hurts. It, is that right? I don't believe that you have to be in pain to cycle. I, I believe that 90% of what you do feel in your bike is your bike's fault. The pain that you do feel in your bike should be reasonable and it should be what you feel in your normal day. So for instance, if we look at, if we look at your injury history and your movement limitations or, or strengths, okay, it tells a story and that has to be the reasonability on your bike. So for instance, if you have um, arthritis in your hip, if I could say, then that should be a reasonability, but we shouldn't aggravate it on the bike. We should find a way that whatever you feel in your normal day or when you train in the gym or when you run or walk, whatever the irritation is then should be the same on the bike or even less if we could. Okay, so there are a few methodologies out there. The most common one is taking basic measurements of a person, typing it into a computer and it throws you out of an average of what the person could sit on and you literally just move, move the saddle and the settings to whatever the computer says. Which I believe is a, is a really good start and it puts you within the boundaries of cycling. At least I know you won't necessarily break your knee. It will be a quick fix, but it's not optimal. So for me, the methodology that I like, I'm, I'm way more of a therapist than what I am a, a cyclist. Um, I do believe that the body has its own story and there's a lot of systems in the body. We don't, we don't just have straight lines. We have muscle and we have nerves and we have arteries and we have scar tissue and old injuries and life happens. So we have to bring all those things into account. We have to look at movement in combination with measurements and then take those angles and, and movements onto the bike and then change the bike within that puzzle. That's, that's what I like to do. I don't think you can fit someone just based on a few measurements. It's a good start, but, but you have to take the whole story into account. And that's what I like. But there are boundaries. So there's a point where even the most flexible person will break their knee or their hip if we out of that boundary. It really doesn't matter what the, what the distances um, are that you want to ride or what kind of riding that you're doing. Your leg still has to move in a circle and your leg can't move in a circle. That is the big thing, is your leg doesn't know, it doesn't know how to turn. It only knows how to absorb impact and push you forward. That's what it wants to do. One mil is the difference between breaking your knee or not, or being irritated in your knee or not. And that is the biggest joint that really can't turn in a circle. Between the three, between the hip, the knee and the ankle, that's the one that really finds difficulty turning. So if you're putting any force through it, it's gonna jam. I would say today more than any, we're spoiled for choice on the type of bike. Does my choice of bike actually make a difference um, to, to my comfort and to, to riding? Absolutely. Now, yeah, that would probably be the very, very basic starting point is we all go to a bike shop and we say, okay, I can't run anymore. I have to get fit. I've been a couch potato for a long time. This is what I want to do. And then they, they show you bike X and then they go, this is ideal. And then you go, okay, cool. But you have no clue what, what that is. So you have to understand what a shock is and what the travel on the shock means. So travel means how much space it's got to, to impact the gravity of whatever the terrain provides, okay? You've got hardtails and dual suspensions. And then the dual suspensions divide into categories of what we call cross country, cross country trail, trail, enduro, downhill, it's crazy. They've given it names to be able to provide you with an experience. So the bike is designed to give you an experience of something. Choosing the type of style has to fit the style of your body limitations and then the terrain that you like to ride. Or to ride. You want to choose the bike that is going to be 80% of your riding. The biggest thing that you can do is um, get a checklist. First of all, 80-20%. What are my limitations? What am I scared of? What makes me feel happy? Those are important. And then what are the bikes that give me those options? And obviously then budget comes into that as well. So it all has to fit into your criteria. Then go find those bikes, see what you like, and then test ride them. Because ultimately your body is like a separate person. It will tell you whether it works for your body or not. And that's quite an incredible feeling. So you'll have three bikes with exactly built 
They were all built for the same experience. They're all, for, for argument's sake, cross-country bikes, but bike A, B, bike A and B is not as fun as bike C was. And it's just because your body was just like, it just worked. It's not, it's not something you can explain. It didn't make bike A and B bad bikes. It wasn't bad brands. It wasn't bad quality. It's just the way your angles and your limitations just fitted into it and it enhanced you rather than limited you.